Open the Interior 2 sample file. I'll pick up where I left off when discussing the scanline renderer. Now I'll talk about ray tracing. But first, do a test render to see what you have in this file. What you're seeing is being rendered by the scanline. The rendering time is 3 seconds. Open the Render Scene dialog and go to the Ray Tracer tab. This is where you can control the Ray Tracer renderer. It actually works in conjunction with all other renderers. So it's special in that regard. Check here to enable ray tracing globally. Go ahead and do another rendering, but first clone the rendered frame window so you can make a comparison. Now what we're seeing right now is a combination of the scan line and the ray tracer. The differences are apparent on the coffee table, in the teapot, a little bit on the picture frame and on the side table. These are areas that are shiny or transparent. These are the areas that the ray tracer can improve. And the problem with it is that ray tracing takes a lot of extra time. Notice that the rendering time is 7 seconds. That's more than double what we got with the scan line alone. However, by comparison, the ray tracer looks way more realistic. This looks very flat. You can accelerate ray tracing in a couple of ways. You can change the maximum depth parameter right here. And it's set to 9 by default. Now this number represents the number of times a ray can be reflected or refracted. So that's pretty high, nine times. Let's try it with the minimum value of zero. And let's get a better look at it. It's hard to see that coffee table in this little test render. Change the render type to blow up and render the scene. Change the size of the blow up to focus on the coffee table and click OK. Now this rendering should take longer than the previous one because more of the pixels in the rendering have to be ray traced. The rendering time is 11 seconds here. We are seeing some reflection in the glass, but the teapot looks opaque. I'll go back to the Ray Tracer tab and increase the depth to 3. I'll make a comparison. So remember, it was 11 seconds with a depth of 0, and we'll see what we get here with a depth of 3. Now already the teapot looks a lot more realistic because with three, we're getting some reflection and refraction through the teapot. And the rendering time is 15 seconds. So we had to pay for that realism with render time. Now it's always a good idea to go ahead and do a blow up test render like this to optimize your maximum depth parameter before you go ahead and render the entire view at maximum resolution. Another thing you can do to speed up ray tracing is to turn off the global ray anti-aliaser. Now what this does is it anti-aliases the rays and that will create blurry looking reflections and refractions. But it's extremely subtle and you're better off using super sampling or just anti-aliasing. Remember, anti-aliasing is handled on the Renderer tab right here. I'm going to set this to Mitchell Netravalli because I'm doing a still. And then I'll do another rendering. So 
So the difference again is going to be very subtle and it might be slightly quicker because I turned off the anti-aliasing within the ray tracer. Again it was 15 seconds so it was about the same. Now one other option you have for accelerating ray tracing is hardware based. And I'll just show you a website of a company that offers a hardware based solution called Raybox. And this can be used in your network to accelerate all of the ray tracing that you do. So check it out at artvps.com.